Well, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining me here in my shop. It's January 23rd today. So, um, I managed to do a very preliminary test of this record player at the end of the last video. I just basically powered it up and watched what it would do or, <laughs> or what it wouldn't do. And a couple observations already. Uh, one is it sounds a little like a railroad train going by on the tracks, clickety clickety click when the ladder's turning. And the other one was uh, when I attempted to use the automatic function, it, it just didn't work at all. In fact, it stalled the platter right out. So uh, this is typical of an old record player like this. It's all about lubrication, probably nothing more than that. It's about two, two things about lubrication. Get rid of the old, bring in the new. And that's kind of what's going to happen today, I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to be looking at lubrication. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is take the platter off the top. Take a look underneath. I am curious about the drive on this record player uh, because it's a very, very thin uh, platter. So uh, can, it, can it be rim drive like that? Feels like it. Feels like some pretty funny feelings in there when I turn this. Oh, I don't know what's going on. So there's going to be a C-clamp in here, which I'm going to have to dig out. And uh, this is not quite a C-clamp. This, this, this one's a bit of a wraparound sort of deal in there. Like a, like a swollen C-clamp. <laughs> swollen. Yeah, that's kind of funny. That's what I've been suffering from for the last week or so, is some uh, swelling. Hey, let me give you a hint about uh, controlling swelling, and uh, believe me, uh, make up your own mind about what you want to do if you've got something swollen. But uh, you know the old thing about put ice on it, put ice on on your swollen whatever. That's pretty good for a sports industry in, uh, injury if it's just happened. Um, but if you've got some chronic sort of swelling, like I had, a, I have an abscess tooth. Uh, ice is not going to be your friend. And uh, it's uh, really nothing to do with heat and cold. Once you have a, a, a sort of a set in swelling, been there a couple of days, you have to get that fluid out of your tissues. And that's, that's the trick of it. How do you get the fluid out? So the normal way uh, fluid uh, is taken out of your tissues is it gets into your lymphatic system and, is, uh, and then it flows away ultimately back into your uh, venous and uh, venous system um, and and but there's no pump there's no heart pumping there, there's nothing helping it to move except the muscles themselves you know, your muscles all over your body when they're contracting and that are in fact pumping fluid into your lymphatic system so I got the swollen face here I don't want to move my jaw although it's, it's not so bad today pretty good now it's almost gone in fact but there I am with a kind of a frozen jaw and uh, no pumping action and I'm putting cold cold on it because that's that's what my mom told me to do and everybody else tells me to do uh, that's actually not going to help at all because no pumping action and all you're doing there is you're going to restrict your uh, um, well, what I'm doing right now, I'm just examining this before I make an attempt at trying to, to open it. There's a bit of a locking piece here. You have to overcome the lock a little bit and then spread it open. Um, you put cold on, you reduce your circulation, you're reducing the blood flow, you're reducing the healing for whatever it is that really caused the swelling in the first place. I don't think this is going to work. A little screwdriver here. Um, so just forget the cold. You have to work the muscles. I guess you could apply direct pressure. You know, just put your hand on it and push on it, or you could even like get, you know, pretend your hand is your jaw muscles, <laughs> pump away that way. But the real, the real name of the game is to is to uh, get the muscles moving. So, uh, so despite the pain, that's what I've done. Now, you know didn't exactly do an experiment on it. They don't have any control, so I don't really know for sure, but sure, it seemed to start relieving the situation. That's too small. Pretty quick. 
maybe coming in here and talking on a video wasn't wasn't the worst thing either. So this is just a little bit too big. Too small, too big. What have I got that's just right? How about Mr. Wooden Antique Screw Driver? So don't just blindly, blindly put cold onto swollen, swollen parts. There we go. Yeah, a lot of these are held on with just a simple C, C uh, clip or E clip. Oh, who's that? That's my, my cat, Peanut. Oh, I popped her right back on. Peanut. I don't want to be too, too rugged on this uh, for fear of, uh, you know, distorting the, uh, the clip. Maybe if I get a grip on it, I can pull it out of there. What's up, Peanut? There we go. Finally, out it comes. There we are. Well, see this one. These two pieces. <laughs> right here is actually a little, a little, a little locky thing. You have to overcome that lock first before you can spread this. And the, these two flat pieces are going into a groove down here and locking it in. And that should have taken about a third of that amount of time, but I split my attention and started talking. Now with any luck, the platter comes right off. Beautiful. Sometimes these can be stuck. I won't go into it, but wow. It can be pretty tough to get that off. We are. There's the wheel. Oh, so it has an inside larger rim. So this this wheel is traveling inside here. That's what's driving the uh, the platter. Okay, th this thing here is the brain. This is the brain here. It's stuck. Okay, this is very very typical. This is the part that tells the uh, that used it to detect when the tone arm is at the end of the record that it's time to pick up. It's called the velocity sensor, and uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty. I'm looking for very free movement of it. There's two parts. You can see this part, and another part you can see poking out down here. That's got the shaft attached to it, and, and these things should move independent of each other and move very freely. And in most cases, they're not lubricated at all. It's just that's not bad. But this is this is bad. This is this is frozen here. That's why when I engaged the auto, uh, a machine made an attempt to operate but didn't get anywhere. In fact, it all just ground to a halt. Engaging the audio when, when you push the auto, it caused this to rotate slightly. Can you see? There's some teeth missing right in here. And if we look on the 
platter. You see the, the teeth on the platter here? So when the teeth on the platter are in this, this spot, the, they don't engage at all with this wheel. And you play your record. Then when it gets towards the end of the record, or when you push the auto switch, this thing rotates slightly forward, engages, goes around once. Junk. When it comes back to this area here where there's no teeth, it'll stall and stop as it's supposed to. That, during that one revolution, there's a little finger sticking up in this track. You'll see it in a minute. Sticking up in the track. And as it goes around, you see how this is not a, a circle. It's, it's asymmetrical. This thing is moved, moved around. And that's what gives the tone arm its, its motion in that. It's when you, when you push auto and the tone arm comes over on its own. It's, it's because of this. This is the brain. Okay, we'll pop now. Here's a C-clip. We'll get this guy off. And you can start to see just how dry and uh, the lubrication has become. Bits and pieces of it here. I call that glubrication. It's no longer lubrication. I've got to get this off. This may be difficult. So this is going to rotate on this little shaft. And the shaft is usually riveted to the deck. And if you crank this hard enough, you and it's frozen in there, you'll end up turning the shaft and loosening it up. It's not the end of the world, but you don't want that to happen. So we need to, to loosen this up. And honestly, the easiest way is to put heat on it. So I'm going to go get a little torch here. Now you don't need a torch of this size. This is what I'm going to use because I have it handy. And I used to take a progressive approach on this. Where I would uh, let me just put this over here. I would uh, first put some solvents on here and try to work it out, and sometimes it'll come off. But now I just go straight to the torch. You don't, you, a little torch, just a little bit of heat. You don't. I mean, this is crazy what I've got here, but that's okay. Crazy is okay. So warm this guy up. It's already loose. I'm just trying to do its thing here. Just a little more. Yeah, just to just to finish off the swelling thing. If you have a sports injury, you apply ice to prevent the swelling because it stops the it slows the blood flow. So, I mean, that's valid, for sure. That's why you see athletes get nice whipped on their ankles right away. So, the wheel warmed up. by the teeth. There we go. See, see the white color on there? That's, that's, the, uh, that's the lubrication no longer lubricating. So this is the part that's moving within the uh, track here. And this track should have a fair bit of lubrication in it. It's a dry as a bone. These pieces are fine on, on this, oddly enough, they're fine. I can shake them and they move around, they just move around by their own weight. Nothing needs to be done with this. If this is gummed up, you have to deal with this too. That, that involves solvent. Just pop this off. 
two parts come out, throw them into some alcohol, and put them back together later. There's another riveted shaft here. If it's really, really stuck, maybe somebody previously put lubrication here. You really shouldn't lubricate this. Lubrication's glued up. You start working on this, you'll ruin this rivet connection here. So that's nice. I don't have to worry about it on this one. Now the name of the, and also this part here is actually a roller to help help uh, help this roll around inside the track here. And oddly enough, it turns. But you can see the lubrication has dried up very much on here. Some lubrication here. Looks to me, I'm going to take a wild guess that somebody took a. Well, no, it's not going to be a. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, at first I thought, oh, well, someone's gone so far as to try to relubricate this area. But they never got this off, so they never did anything under here. But in fact, this looks like it's lubricated the same as that. Same color of lubrication. So you just want to start removing all this stuff as much as you can. Get rid of it in favor of some new stuff. Looks to me like in the factory when they do this, they just have a brush and they go on it. Now the platter itself, of course, has to be has supported in some way. It's uh, the platter and very bottom of this surface here sits on top of that. Spins on this shaft, sits on top of this. And we can take this apart very easily. It's usually three things. A washer on the top, drop it on my bench. What's the first thing I've done? Dropped it on my bench over here. Oh, son of a gun. There we go. The next thing is a little cup of ball bearings. Cup of bearings. You take this out and then lose track of it. Does it go this way or does it go that way? It goes the way you would have your coffee cup. Because you're going to put lubrication in it, not so much on it. This is fairly uh, fairly loose lubricant. You know what could have happened here? If somebody sprayed it with WD-40 or some other kind of oil, stuck it down, down in there. It's very oily down here, in fact. Very oily. So I'm going to guess that's what's happened. Now when you add new lubrication to old lubrication, it wakes up the old lubrication. And uh, if it's gone sticky, it'll un unstick it. So you can get away with that. I'm going to get rid of much of it here. So the challenge in, in building a record player is to have a platter that doesn't have any noise in it. Any rumbling. You've probably, if you're a record player guy, you've heard the term rumble. Usually has to do with the noise in the platter. Gets to the platter. You want to try to isolate the platter away from that. Well, it's pretty tricky. I mean, how can you isolate the platter? Well, you've got this shaft here. That's th this shaft to be riveted quite firmly to, to the deck here. You can't get rid of all of it. The problem with the rumble is uh, you don't want that coming out of your speaker. So one way to deal with that is to limit the sound quality overall in the record player. So you have a cartridge that won't reproduce really low sounds, a speaker that won't reproduce really low sounds. The overall sound quality is going downhill, but at least you don't have a rumble coming out. I'll be, I'm going to clean these up off camera here. So you do another washer here. And then the last thing is usually a rubber ring. You can see it down there. Rubber ring is trying to 
eliminate some of that rumble from coming through, but you know, how effective can that really be? Now this particular player has a pretty good cartridge in it, I'm pretty sure. Big speaker in the console. So this may just may have been built with such a quality that in fact it doesn't transmit too much rumble from here. And this isn't the main source anyway. I'm going to show you the main source shortly. Okay, that's that's okay for now. Uh, next thing to consider, although this requires more work, I have to clean this up, do that kind of stuff. I'll do that in, in a bit. Let's just go with what the problems are. The drive system. So what I'm checking for is to make sure the wheel is not pushing up onto the motor while it's sitting here. A lot of record players, when you turn them into the off position, there's a lever that comes over and pushes this away. Now the platter's off. If the platter were on, this, this wheel would be pushed a little bit. So that's just some kind of a post here. Can't push it too far. So the idea is this wheel is being pulled against the capistan on the motor here. And Pushed, uh, pulled, really, pulled against the capistan and against the track on the inside of the platter. And that's that's the major traction, I guess you could say, area. Size of this wheel uh, doesn't matter for the speed of the record player. It matters for some other things about making sure there's enough contact and, and that. So the question would be, for a wheel like this, what's happened on the surface here? I'm going to use my fantastic fingernail. I'm just going to put it on there and feel it. Okay, so that that feels hard. That feels totally hard. So with this being hard, there's a good chance of slippage against both the capistan and the uh, platter. Probably more likely the capistan because of the reduced surface contact here. This guy's got to come off and he's got to go through a treatment. If you look down past the motor, you can see kind of a dark powdery material down in here. That's the same hard stuff coming off to some degree from the uh, capistan kind of grinding at it a bit. That's a sign that this thing needs some treatment. I've got a little too much oil on my fingers right now to do the next part, so I'm going to have to stop and clean up a little bit before I do that. Um, of course, th this is one of the major places where a rumble and hum can get into the platter, into the record, and then into the needle, and then out of your speakers. So, um, I think it's pretty important for this to be fairly soft. I'm sure what we'll find is that there's just a hard shell on the outside here. Now I can, uh, I've got a little too much oil here on my finger, so I can just Pull this up a little bit and feel it for if it's rubbery. I'm looking at the bend in here, yeah, it's fine. This is typical. Now you can replace this. You can get replacements for it. But I tend to just grind them, and I'll show you. I'll show you how to grind them so they remain round. If if the machine is left in the play position, if the tone arm has come part way across and for some reason you stopped the machine and just left it out here with the tone arm part way across so the mechanism is not in a safe position that would leave this in contact with some spring power see the spring here pulling it um, you leave it like that for oh I don't know 10 years <laughs> you end up with a dent in the wheel and as it goes around, that dent goes by, you hear thump, 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 thump. Now that's what we heard. Um, I don't really see a dent. Yes, there's a dent right here. It's not, it's not terribly uh, easy to see. Let me put something white under it. It's, it's very, very minor. 
I don't think you're going to be able to really see that there's a, a dent, a divot right here. Let's see if there's another. So this, this has spent some time in under pressure. There's one right here. Did I go all the way around already? Those are probably grind away. They'd be gone. If you don't get rid of those dents, you're going to hear dun, 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 as this wheel spins around. Okay, and I clean my fingers and we'll continue with the wheel treatment here. Okay, so the next step is to get this guy off. Now, the thing about these C clips, if you've never removed one, they can disappear. <laughs> They can fly off and be gone, and you don't want to lose these guys. So when you take them off very carefully, didn't go anywhere. Put them in my little collection over yonder. Should just lift right off. Now careful, there's washers here. There's a washer right here. Sometimes there's a washer stuck on the bottom. Nope, there's a washer down here. You don't want to lose those washers. I'm just going to put this one over here in my little collection area. Clear the deck for the next step. Now, you look at this edge on. Let me get myself looking at it with you here in the camera. You see how shiny that surface is? Is this surface that shiny? No. This surface is. This one right on the edge. Very, oh, there's, there's some of the bumps that are in it. That shiny surface is no good. There's another bump. It did have kind of a dump 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 sound to it, didn't it, when it uh, was turning around. We gotta get rid of that. I use highly specialized equipment to do this. Okay? You probably own the same highly specialized equipment. One part is a chunk of sandpaper. This is fairly fine sandpaper. You don't want to use a really coarse sandpaper. Fairly fine, fine sandpaper. A clamp to hold the sandpaper there. This is the main instrument involved. Your basic hand drill, except you don't want to drill. On here. To fish out a long screw and nut. In my uh, screw collection over here, I keep a drawer full of screws on nuts. Let's get this here. This looks good. Well, it's not the right shape here. This is beveled, it's not the best shape. This, this will probably work. I'd rather have one with a flat, flattish head on it. That's not going to do it. That's the same thing there. This is probably too big. Yeah. That looks nice. I like that. Okay, so you, you want it to fit fairly tight. This is pretty loose, but it really doesn't matter. This one comes with a lock washer. Ooh, bonus! So I'm going to use this uh, brass brass one here. We're going to turn it into a drive shaft. Sometimes you can get away without the lock washer. It's going to help if there's a lock washer on it got to stick out. And I'm taking little breaks here today from the shop work. I'm sitting down in front of the TV and I'm watching Dr. John Campbell. He's a physician in England. I've been watching a lot of his videos as he talks about COVID, but I just found an older video from about eight years ago, I guess where he's describing the process of wound healing in people. Of course, that's what's going on in my face right now. 
So I'm here showing you how to do this, and he's there showing me what's going on in my face. <laughs> my, uh, my healing face. So we just tighten this up. Okay, this, this may wreck the screw a little bit, but it shouldn't do too much damage to it, what I'm going to do here. There. You want that tight enough, it's not going to come loose. Now we take the uh, intermediate repair machine. Just to get here. I thought this drill had gone south. The last few times I pulled it out, I, I couldn't get it to work. You know, it was... Uh, Squeeze the trigger and this nice little light would come on, but it wouldn't it wouldn't work. And one day I said to myself, it's not broken, it's probably just not charged up. And sure enough, that's all it was. There we are, we are ready now. You can guess what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grind that surface off using this, just with the hand drill here. I wanna hold it like that, I wanna hold it the other way, I wanna hold it quite level. I gotta, gotta make sure I can get to the bottom here, so I'm gonna come this way. And we're going to grind it to get rid of these divots and to get rid of the hard shell that's formed here. There we go. As I'm doing this, uh, along with hearing the sound of the machine, you can hear the thump, 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 thump. I'm waiting, waiting for it to disappear, the thump, thump, thump. That's a lot. It's a lot coming off there. Still thumping a little bit, though. Sounds quiet. Let's just try a clean spot and see how much it kicks off. Here. Now while you're doing this, of course, you're reducing the diameter of this wheel. And as I say, it won't affect the speed, but I have got myself into hot water doing this where this would no longer make secure contact against the, uh, the rim and against the uh, capistan on the motor. That's a lot to grind off there. We had to get rid of those thumps. Let's check one last time here. No thump? Usually when you get down far enough, you don't produce much powder. Now there's, there's an edge here and an edge here. I'm gonna try to just take those off a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Just, just a little wee bit. So you don't want to round this off. You want, to, you want like your car tire. You want a flat surface. That should be good enough. You can see the shine is off. The shine is off, Jim. There we go. That's all there is to that. Like I say you can, you can, you can get buy replacements for these. Um, I think they're newly manufactured. There's a fellow in. Uh, Montreal, is it? Who's making these? I'm not sure. I guess this is just powdery junk. Okay, I set that aside. That's all there is to doing that. The change in the amount of traction is really stunning. When, uh, when you have a nice soft surface here, it really grips nicely. We can't do it like that. There we go.
So if you have a record player that plays, everything works, but it tends to slow down, particularly when the needle sets down on the record. You can hear, you know, there's a bit of momentum in the record and the platter. And you can hear what's going on here. My cord is caught. You can hear the record slow down a little bit. The needle touches and it just kind of drops in speed. That's an indication that the traction is poor here. Could be other things, but mainly this is where the traction is. Is uh, uh, the critical traction is occurring? Okay, so what I need to do is just clean away the oil, and I'm going to re reassemble this. So I'll, I'll do the cleaning off camera. It's boring. Just going to use alcohol, WD-40, and uh, just just clean, especially here and stick a little alcohol down in here try to clean this guy up you can't get this little wheel off there's no reason to but you do want to get some new lubricant into it or at the very least wake up the old stuff this is actually this is actually not so bad I clean this out this 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 to clean this out you know, you get a little tool and pick out the old lubricant much as you can. You're going to need something to put in there. Uh, bicycle bearing, lubricant, all, all, all kinds of greases would work. I've got some silicone grease I'll be using. Probably the better choice is a silicone grease. So I don't think it ages, really. I think it... Okay, so I've got to clean this stuff up here. Why don't I just take a minute and talk about the chemistry set here before uh, before I go any further. So let's start with these oils. Yeah, they look the same. They both say three and one. What could be different about them? If you look close, one says multi-purpose oil and another one says motor oil. Not engine oil, motor oil. This is the one to use. This one will be synthetic. This one's not synthetic may not be synthetic. I'm going to use a synthetic oil, if you're going to use oil, I'm, I'm not really showing you where you're going to use oil on this, but if you are, you need to use this kind of oil, it won't dry up. This is my alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, uh, you know, there's two kinds of alcohol, I don't know what to say about it, this is what I got. Okay. WD-40, I'm not particularly promoting WD-40, uh, but of course almost everybody has this in their homes and uh, water displacement formula number 40 built to be sprayed on the outside of rockets when it was discovered it had some other uses so what is this stuff this stuff is a combination a secret combination of oil and solvents the solvents uh, are, uh, volatilize they, they, they dry off they disappear and uh, leaves behind a very thin film of supposedly high quality oils. So this this is very good at penetrating uh, because of the solvent that's in it initially. Point nozzle towards Mark. Point nozzle towards Mark. <laughs> There's nobody here named Mark. That's what I, and then here, this is a grease. I'll be using a fair bit of this. This, you know, I'm not suggesting this is a particular brand or anything. It's the type synthetic grease, multi-purpose synthetic grease. Auto, home, power, sport, record players. Again, th this stuff uh, doesn't degrade over time, whereas other greases may degrade over time. You want to fix this so it's going to run for 20, 25 years. I'm probably not going to run for 25 years. But that's kind of what you got in the back of your mind. You're trying to do something here that won't have to be done again for uh, during the lifetime of whoever owns this. The assumption being whoever owns this is roughly my age or up there. So, okay, I'm going to now attend to cleaning. I'm just doing the uh, regular cleaning sort of deal here. In fact, I'm just going to put a little of this right on there. Give it a moment. Take a little of this. A little of this, a little of that. Give it a drop. Bring my tools. 
Good practice for me. Put the lid back on right away. Don't leave open containers around. Okay, off camera cleaning. I did say off camera, didn't I, a few times? But here's what I'm actually doing. I'm just shoveling out as much of this old stuff. You don't have to get it all out. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. If you're doing a record player that was owned by a teenage girl, this would be full of hair. It's been my experience. There's no hair in here at all. This must be owned by an older guy like me because I have no hair to spare. Just trying to get the bulk of it out, especially if it's still kind of uh, loose like this isn't this isn't bone dry here. Don't pick the, uh, the balls out. Always a good thing to leave your balls in place. Once the once your balls are out, it's pretty hard to get your balls back in, so you don't want to do that. Okay, very good. I'll whack this with uh, alcohol. I like alcohol. <laughs> No, actually, I, I'm really not much of a drinker. Yeah, uh, a little bit of beer now and then, but uh, I like alcohol in the shop here because I think it's really, really quite harmless when it comes to chemicals. Contaminate the jar. thing. Ever think about that for a minute? You drink alcohol, what are you drinking? You're drinking cleaning fluid? You're drinking rocket fuel? You're drinking um, a solvent. The uh, drunk effect is the same effect from sniffing glue. It's the same thing, sniffing glue. Drink alcohol, sniff glue, Hey, you're in the same you're in the same category. You believe that? Means, you know, next time you have your friends over for dinner, instead of serving up some wine, just pull out some glue. There, sniff this. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a boring area here now. Again, this doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I'm not a stickler for being 100%. But personally, I actually have a philosophy on that. Uh, I think if you strive for 100% in life, uh, I think it's a mistake. Yeah, you know, one thing done at at 100% five things done at 80 percent. I think I'd rather have five things done at 80 percent. That's a philosophical choice. Maybe 90 percent. The other thing about alcohol, uh, using it here, at like least rubbing alcohol or whatever it is, is it just evaporates away and it's gone. Now, it's not 100% true. There's a little bit left over from, of, of, of something. I think there's the two kinds of alcohols, and I, I don't know enough to really comment on it. One of them is a little better for this kind of work than the other. I don't think I have quite the right one, but it's not going to make any difference anyway. There we are. That's ready. Just any little bit of lubrication that stays in there is going to be uh, kind of mixed up with what I'm about to put in. Sort of uh, rejuvenated, that would be the word for it, wouldn't it? Yeah, 
Yes, Dr. John Campbell. I've spent a lot of time watching his videos on uh, COVID. He does a daily, does a daily video. Um, he, he can get things wrong. Everybody can, especially in a you know moving target like COVID. But he's pretty good at uh, telling it like it is. Nothing, nothing uh, uh, weird or strange or you know don't believe what the authorities say nothing like that his big focal point with uh, COVID by the way is vitamin D and zinc uh, it, you know vitamin D we're, we're all low on vitamin D here in Canada any northern country where you're not getting a substantial amount of sunshine daily you end up low on vitamin D, and vitamin D is really important for a lot of things. Okay, pretty sure these two washers are identical. And we're ready now. My greased up fingers. Just reassemble this. Where this goes in like a cup so it's holding the grease and then the top washer goes in goes on goes over I go just use my fingers there on that that's about it for that you think about the uh, torque leverage and things like that that are going on in the record player you can realize that the forces at this center of the platter is huge so a little bit of poor lubrication here is not going to stop anything it would have, it would have to be something terrible going on to, to, to stop it but I guess it could slow it a bit maybe put a little extra drag on if you've got problems with uh, the uh, uh, contact here any little additional drag in the system uh, is uh, potentially going to, going to cause a record player to to run slow and inconsistent so an another sign that uh, the traction on the uh, wheel here is weak is when you push it onto auto the machine just slow, slows down at some point in this mechanism operation it reaches the uh, point of maximum force at some point it has to be that way right just like a rocket going through the atmosphere at some point it's going to reach maximum dynamic whatever they call it maximum dynamic stress that's the point where your record player is going to stall well it may, may, may stall before that point but you can watch your record player operate and see that it's laboring and then it gets to a certain point and it seems to go okay again you know it's getting around the bends on that on that wheel trying to get around the bends on that uh, I can't think of the proper name for it. proper name for this by the way is intermediate wheel um, some, a lot of people call this the idler wheel not really sure why that term is used and the platter's off, you get a big opportunity to do stuff like that. And uh, clean things up a little bit. I said I was going to do this off camera, didn't I? That's okay. Say one thing, do another. Okay, so now this, this guy's lubrication and uh, I haven't taken care of the wheel yet. This guy's lubrication, can you can you see there's little grooves in here? There's a groove there and a groove there. I, I believe that is intended to hold a bit of lubrication in here, I believe. So I'm just kind of checking it to see if I got it all cleaned out. It would be better to put it, take a closer look at it, but any little bit that's left in there is probably going to just loosen up anyway when the new 
lubrication is applied. Grease or oil? You'd use grease on something like this. This oil is going to drain away. Very good. Talking about oil, I'm going to pop this guy open. So it's pretty tough to get all of the stuff out of out of inside here. Yeah, I used a little alcohol, I, I pumped it and stuff like that. Once again, a little bit left inside is not going to be the end of the world. A lot of record players, that part doesn't even turn. Yet the uh, record player will still operate because this can skid. We want real smooth operation. We want that to be free and loose. So I mean, you should be getting the idea that you know, if you've got a record player and you're saying to yourself, "Gee, can, can I do this?" Yeah, the answer is yes. Still, a lot, lots more to do here. There's nothing here uh, anybody can't do. The household tools and stuff you have handy get very much in there. A little generous. But it, that's ready. Now I'll turn attention to the uh, the thing whose name I do not know. I've forgotten what this is called. The race track. The uh, raceway? Raceway? Would that be it? Okay, so it would be good to get rid of a little bit of the oil or grease that's left in there. Not that there's much. WD-40 treatment. Why didn't they use alcohol there? Because I didn't. That's about as much thinking that goes into that. Clean out the old. It'd be very important to not get grease or oil on the velocity sensor. I'll talk a little bit about the velocity sensor while I'm putting this together because we're not going to take that part apart. It's just fine. So on the inside of your records, when the uh, record is finished, let me start with a really old record. I have a really old 78 record. The inside groove, the final groove that the needle goes into, isn't the same as the groove on a more modern record. The groove goes back and forth like this. So when the needle finishes the record and goes into the interior groove, it goes back and forth. As soon as it moves in the reverse direction, there's a mechanical system to detect that, and that will cause a record player to go into automatic pickup and shut off. But if you look at most records, I mean everything since 1920, whatever, that's not how it's done. Instead. The groove runs quickly towards the center. I never thought of it that way when, when I was a kid. I just thought what they had was they didn't use up all the plastic, so the last bit you, you move, it, 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 the, the groove is spread, and the tone arm, which has been drifting so slowly across the record, kind of moves in quickly like that. But that speed of movement is what trips the mechanism. This is the mechanism here. And uh, explaining this is a little tricky. Uh, you might want to try to find another explanation for it. But I think of it as a kicker, a kickbacker, back kicker. Uh, let's let's put a little of this on here. So when the record is about one third over, or two two thirds over, right? You've played about two thirds of the record, m maybe even a little more. This mechanism here starts coming into play, and what happens is it's being pushed by a lever. Here it is. Here, this lever. Don't oil this. Don't oil this. This lever. 
see how lightly it is? I just barely touch it. So the torn arm's coming across. At some point underneath, a mechanism starts bumping into this guy. And I said, well, you can see it. Watch. There, see it, see it. Well, well, okay. So there's a little trouble under here. What should happen, though, is as the torn arm comes across, at some point it starts pushing this forward. That is bumping into this and pushing it forward. There's a catch on here. And, you know, I, I can't be absolutely... I can't, can't describe this 100% detail, but there's a catch. I think it's this piece here. This, this little piece. See how it's kind of out where the teeth are? At some point, this will move far enough that it will catch the gear on the inside of the platter. Remember I showed you that platter with the gear part on the inside. We'll catch that. When it catches, it will cause this wheel to turn a bit, enough that the real teeth will engage and will go on its one revolution trip after that. I need a Q-tip tip here. I don't know if I have one. Handy. So different records are different dimensions. They are not all the same amount of music on them. So the exact point where the record wants the record player to pick up is, uh, is, is, is hard to standardize or to fix. So every record's the same. So to overcome that, they use this velocity technique. So now you know at, at some point this is going to engage. When the record is playing and the tone arm is moving very slowly, and this is moving very slowly, and this is moving very slowly, there's a kickback that occurs. I think I think it's this piece down here. Every time we go around, let's look at the platter again, because I'll show you where the kicker is. Be one in here. Well, there it is, right there. there my greasy hands here. Ugh, greasy hands. Greasy hands. I don't want to get grease on something. So that's the kicker. Look, look, can you see the shape of it there? It's just an extra little bump of metal shaped in a certain way. these two pieces that flop around if I push this top one this bottom one here and watch what the top one these two are independent sort of independent you see I can move this bottom piece without moving the top piece whoop see the top piece move that time this bottom piece when it turns has enough friction holding to the top piece here with the uh, grabber that it'll carry it back out of the way. See this is no longer out in the uh, teeth area. Every time that record rotates as the tone arm moves in this piece is pushed forward but then the kicker kicks it back. When you get to the middle of the record and the arm moves fast enough in the center of the record. This gets pushed far enough forward that the kicker cannot kick it clear in time. And at that point it will engage with the uh, with the gear uh, on the platter and start the whole mechanism going. That's why it's called a velocity sensor, because it's dependent upon the speed at which this is moving. That's also why if you have one of these record players and you didn't know all this, you know there are times where you, you pick up the needle and maybe you decide, oh, I'm going to make it go automatic, and you start moving it towards the center, and it, it picks up all of a sudden, what, I never even got it to the center of the record, and it's picked up. What, 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 well that's 
That's because of the velocity at which you move this. If you want to try to move it all the way to the center for some reason, maybe you're, you're testing or experimenting, you've got to move it just about as slow as it moves when it's playing a record, very, very slowly. So th these things are recurring as the record's going around. If you listen very carefully, you can hear these things, but in most cases you can't, because if you could hear them, probably they would transmit enough sound right up into the platter you hear it come out of the speaker. That wouldn't be very good. I'll bet you if you could do it and turn your record play, record volume way up, you'd hear all these mechanics going. But the music is covering it, so you don't, you don't hear any of it. Looks pretty good to me. Now we got to add a little, a little grease. Grease them up. You don't have to fill this with grease. That's not the idea, because the uh, this thing's going to come along and sweep it all over the place. So, but you do need some in here, for sure. Jim, why don't you have gloves on while you do this? The answer is the same to the answer to another question I'm asked by my wife all the time. Why are you painting with a good shirt on? What are you doing? You got, you got, you got good, good clothes on. What are you doing? I'm being lazy. Yeah, so you could rubber yourself up. Put on some rubber gloves and do this kind of thing. Stay a little cleaner. Don't get any grease or oil on this mechanism. It's not needed. If the mechanism is sticky, you've got to clean it up and get it to be loose again with no grease or oil. Ideally. Fresh fresh oil? What oil in particular probably wouldn't, especially thin fresh oil, probably wouldn't interfere with the operation of this. But over time, it's going to change from being lubrication to glubrication. Uh, it's just intended to be done this way. Now, part of the trick here, let's just think for a minute. I put some lubrication there. Let's put it right in the shaft here, too. Putting this back together can be a little bit tricky because you've got to get this to fit in the groove. You've got to pay a little bit of attention to that. Should we put it back together before doing the underside? This is the overside work, of top work. There's a whole bunch of bot, not a whole bunch, but there's some bottom work that has to be done too. Well, we can put this back on. Not the end of the world, I have to take it back off. Okay, see, so put this over, you know where the gap is. It's supposed to be like this. It's when the record player is in neutral, in its neutral position. Now it's riding on top there. We gotta help it out a little bit. I just oh maybe maybe it'll, maybe it'll go. A little too far. A little too much help there. There we go. Down. Put on the E clip. To me, it looks like a C. I guess you can call that an E. Putting these clips on is another time where you're really likely to lose them. I use a technique here that I've practiced enough that I can get away with it. But uh, Do the wrong thing and this will just fly into places even your cats don't know about. So you don't want that to happen. Here's what I do. I take a risky way of doing this. Put it like that. Take a pair of pliers that's got some grooves in it. This is the point where I regret making a video. I try to line this up perfectly. And then just apply a little bit of pressure. 
there we go. Do that a little wrong and boom, it's gone. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop and clean my fingers before I handle the intermediate wheel again. Okay, I'm gonna put the uh, intermediate wheel back on. Make sure the washers are exactly the way they were. Height of this wheel is really critical in rubbing or running against the uh, capistan. See, the capistan has different diameters. That's for the different speeds. Let's try the speed control here. Okay, so the speed control does not want to move. Now, is, oh, there it goes. Is, some of these are better to do with the record player playing than to have them sitting here. Watch this wheel very carefully. As I just move the lever, very, very simply here. A little hard to see what I'm doing here. You'll see the wheel pulls off and comes on. Pulls off and comes on. And we're up to the top. 16. Who's, who's got a 16 speed record? are all just little refinements in the mechanism that I guess the engineers developed over time. Uh, the, this mechanism wasn't thought up overnight. This is a revision of a revision of a revision all the way back for 40 years, whatever it was. Just get a little bit of refinements in it. So certain things don't happen. Trying to move this wheel up and down on here without kind of pulling it away would be a little tricky. Come on. Okay, here we go again with the danger procedure. I generally don't lubricate this. Uh, I've never noticed them to have been lubricated. If you were, it'd be, again, very light oil, nothing more. Probably don't want to lubricate this because there's a chance the oil will migrate out. You certainly don't want oil on the outside of this guy here. Now, there is somewhere you do want to lubricate. Before we finish with the top, I'm going to get some lubrication to run down in the motor there. Looking for is where I would put it. Now I've got a special bottle of lubrication here for that. This just just has a, has a has a long needle. I can kind of direct it very nicely. I don't want to put a lot. In fact, it's hard to put a lot with this. even know if you put any. Yeah, there's oil coming out. One drop right there. What I was doing, I just rotated this piece and looked at what was turning and what was not and got the oil in between. A little lower down in the actual bearing part. No, I don't think I can do any more than that. There's a much more important bearing on the motor underneath that we'll probably deal with uh, next. So I'm going to check and see how long this video has gone. If, if I've done about an hour here, I think I'm going to stop and I'll post what I've done now. If not, I'm going to flip it over and carry on underneath, F finish off the mechanics of it. Uh, but at this point, probably the record player will play. Uh, the, the automatic features will probably work OK. Not necessarily, but probably OK. Let me, let me check how long the video is. Okay, so I'm over an hour now, uh, so I'm going to call it right here. I'm just going to comment on one more thing. This, this spring here, which is pulling on this wheel, sometimes you need to tighten this spring up to increase the tension on the uh, wheel. 
I get oil on it here? Um, a couple of easy ways to do that. Not necessary here as far as I know. Not normally necessary, but it can be part of the process of uh, increasing the traction and reducing the slippage. So that's it. That's it for today. Um, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, tomorrow we'll flip this guy over and we'll fool around with the parts underneath. It's just more lubrication, cleaning, getting everything working properly and moving, moving smoothly in that. And then it'll be time to start dealing with the cartridge, the needle, and all that. And then we'll be done. So tomorrow I'll be done with this, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, enjoy your day. I'm going to go enjoy mine. I've been enjoying it so far. See ya. Oh, and one last thing. Did I say something about don't forget these washers? I forgot the washer. I'm going to put it on. Often when I make these videos, uh, little things like that get, get slipped through the cracks during the video. And then afterwards, after I've done prepared the video and posted it, I'll come in here and I'll go, oh, look at that. I, I, I did this or I did that. And I can correct it. It never goes on video. Uh, it happens a fair bit. Um, that's just the risk that comes with this, doing this. So I'm putting in that washer in case somebody noticed I didn't do it. There it is. Okay, now we're done. Thanks again.